I was like, I do not want to talk to you or see you ever again. I said that out of like the situation that happened and how I found out everything. And that's where it was kind of left off. So I did not really have any communication with her for years. Did you, well, obviously, have you spoken to her since you kind of gave her, not necessarily the ultimatum, but like, get out of my life. I don't want to talk to you. Have you spoken to her at all? Yeah. Do I want to get into this? No, don't. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. Hey. We're back. <laughs> Welcome back to In the Booth. I'm Sean Booth, and we've got Sam Katz riding shotgun today. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, like that shirt. Thank you. Kelly Kapowski. For I those like- of you that don't or aren't watching on YouTube, it is a picture of my childhood crush, Kelly Kapowski. I would say that she's probably in the top five for every millennial. Kelly Kapowski. Topanga, the Pink, Pink Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the other two, but those are top three for sure. I think I could think about it, but I'm not off the top of my head. Yeah. I actually, fun, quick story. I rarely get starstruck and I, I don't really fangirl over anybody. Got invited to Kelly Kapowski's launch of her champagne years ago. And I was like, oh my God. Were you weird? Yeah. Uh, went to this party it was here in Nashville. And then there was like a handful of us hanging out afterwards. And she's like, you guys want to go get some pizza down the road? And I was like, yeah, sure do. And so we went to this restaurant and sat right across from her. And I mean, I was a fan girl. Were your hands sweating? I was. Did you feel like a childhood boy? Did I you have fe- a poster? It was, I mean, it was literally just. Growing up, she was the it girl. That was every guy's crush. Like I had a massive crush on her. I loved Saved by the Bell. And fast forward 20 something years later, and I'm sitting across the table from her eating pizza, falling in love. (laughs) (laughs) Don't know about that part. She was talking about her husband and her kids. Um, You weren't listening to that part? Yeah. And I was with my uh, fiance at the time. So we weren't really falling in love. But in my mind, I was just like, and my fiance was super cool about it. She knew that I was just fangirling big time. Well, I feel like that's different. It's a childhood crush. And I feel like that's one of the moments where you sit across, you're like, what is my life? Like, how did I get here? Yeah, exactly. It all comes full circle. Welcome back. Thank you guys for all of the love so far on the podcast. It has been so cool to see. Like I've said on social media, if you follow me, anytime you put your heart and soul and energy into something and you just throw it out to the world for people to judge, you hope they accept it. And you guys have been so cool about the podcast. It just kind of confirms that what we're doing here is on the right path. And I don't know, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm having a ton of fun doing this. And this is where we're going to ask you guys if you could just help us by subscribing to all of our channels. It's easy to do. You can do it right now. I'll give you 15 seconds. If you're driving down the road, don't do it. Pull over off the side of the highway. (laughs) Look for that plus sign on Spotify. (laughs) Top right, follow, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We have a YouTube channel and now we have a Facebook group. I wanted to create a Facebook group to create a community where we can go in, talk about things. We're also going to have guests on the show, all that fun stuff. So subscribe to all the things, leave a review, rate us all the stars you want. It helps us out tremendously. Hashtag not an ad. Hashtag not an ad, but important. Important. So we're back here and we're coming off a weekend here in Nashville, Tennessee, of the annual CMA Fest. Yes. Usually and pretty sweaty. Pretty sweaty. Not too bad this year. No. How, how, what'd you do for CMA Fest? Well, I was working, right. but I also got to be a tourist. I did make time to do that as well. But I, like I've stated before, I work for Old Dominion. So we had a couple events um, on Friday and Saturday, obviously the biggest one being at Nissan on Saturday night, which is, you know, the artists uh, make a goal to make it quote unquote across the river. That's the thing, because there's like the riverfront stage is the step before you get to Nissan. Gotcha. Um, But, you know, there's a lot of free events. And I think that that's what's so attractive to the tourists and for people who love country music. We had an event on Friday morning at Acme. Doors opened at 10. And when I got there at 5.45 a.m., there were people out front waiting. True. I mean, it's a nightmare. If you live in Nashville, it's always like you're going to avoid downtown if you don't want to go see anybody because... It's just chaos. There's yes. nowhere to park. There's drunk people everywhere. Yeah. It's fun. And I 
partook in some of the events this year for the first time in a few years. You had me <laughs> floored. Sean yeah. Booth came out, not one, but two nights in a row. Two nights in a row. I thought you were ill. I didn't know what was going on. And going out two nights in a row, I felt ill and had to take a nap <laughs> the next day, both days on Saturday and Sunday. And like I said, this life ain't for everybody. It ain't for everybody, but I'm glad I went. It was super fun. That was the first time I went to the CMA Fest, I think, at Nissan Stadium. Really? Yeah. I think it's the first time. I've been to, obviously, a ton of shows there, but for the actual CMA Fest, I've always gone to like the little bars and the smaller shows and supporting friends and like you said, getting that step across to the river. Yeah. I that was my first step going across the river this Congratulations. year. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. How many artists do you think play that weekend on CMA Fest? Uh, with everything. 100? Oh, yeah. From top to bottom, like top every stage bottom. and everything. Every stage. I say 250. 250. Have you ever seen the CMA Fest? Like you yeah. can look at their Instagram and it names every name. Yeah. There are I think like 7 to 10 stages and then plus Nissan. Right. And there's the fanfare event that they had at the um, convention center where there's like a lot of meet and greets. I mean, I know that's not a show, but that's still artists that are meeting guests and tourists and stuff like that. I do. I mean, I have to say, like I said, I did work for Friday and Saturday, but I got to be a tourist on Sunday and I didn't realize how much I needed that because being a fan of country music is fun. It is and fun. At no point am I saying that my job is not fun. I have a fantastic job, but at the end of the day, it is work. And so it's nice to have that refreshing experience. Like I went and I screamed saying Tim McGraw at the top of my lungs and had so much fun with just my friends with no responsibilities. I did check for my radio on my shoulder like twice, which I feel like is a nervous tick. But uh, other than that, I think it's like a healthy reminder to be like, wow, this people spend their hard earned money to get here. And it's like a family vacation for them and it's amazing, but it's a nice reminder for me to not take it for granted. Exactly. And that is the perfect segue into okay. Okay. an argument that we had Saturday night oh at Which Nissan one? Stadium right in front of the stage. And we were going <laughs> at it because we disagree uh, heavily on this topic here. Listen, I understand where you're coming from. I just think you're wrong. Tee it up for us, Sam Cap. Okay, so... What had happened was Sean, his first time at Nissan, comes in with bold opinions, apparently. Um, but Sean felt a little, can I say slighted or just like disappointed, confused? What was the word yeah, you would use? I personally wasn't disappointed. I was just, I didn't understand. Let's say that. I don't understand. Okay. I, no, I do understand, but I don't understand. Okay. Well, that's how I feel about it. I agree with you, but I don't. So we're basically saying the same thing in circles. Essentially, what was maybe wanted by the collective group that from was an there from an artist. Yeah. How do I want to say this like without politely? Saying names. I know without saying names. Uh, the fans seem to have been a little disappointed with what they were given from one artist. From one artist in, in particular. particular. But you know what? There could have been other ones and we just don't know about it. No, the, all the other ones killed it. They came out okay. firing okay. all cylinders. And so Sean was saying his argument is that. The artists that have made it across the river and get to play at Nissan should give the fans exactly what they want, whether that, I, I guess, basically more hits, more well-known songs right, that everybody can sing along to and they want to bop around. My argument was that I don't think the artists should have to change their set to accommodate maybe someone who's not specifically there Fan, like, what if someone bought a ticket to see Old Dominion and not John Party? John Party has to change his set to appeal to the masses. John Party is always going to appeal to okay, the masses. Okay, that's not right? the point, Booth. He played the hits. That's not the point. No, but so, well, if you don't know how it works. You get 30, yeah, it's not a regular show. Right. Each artist. How many no artists matter. were there for that night? It started at five. 6 p.m. Yeah, they do like five big names and everybody gets 30 minutes. They get a 30 minute set. An average set, if you are a headliner, is like 90 minutes. So you only have about four or five songs. It is a short and to the point quick set. The majority of the artists came out and they sang their number ones. They sang the ones that, you know, might have not been number one on the charts, but everybody, everybody knows. knows. There was some particular artists who came out and no, they no, did no, not. not. Artists, one artist okay, in particular. One artist. Who were, everybody was there. To see. To see. Yes. It was big time. We were with people around us who were massive fans waiting yes. to see this artist come on stage. Okay. But and that's then my exact point. No, no, no. Do not cut me off. That's my exact point. We were with people who are quote unquote a huge fan of this artist. So then they should know the deep cuts. Well, this is what Sam Cat is saying is that this artist doesn't need to play all the hits 
and the number one songs because if you were a true fan, you would know the songs on the albums that nobody else knows. Yes, I, I, yeah, and I stand by it. I'm not but it's saying. Not, why is it not? Why is it not? Like you're saying, there are people who worked all year long to don't use fly my words against Nashville me <laughs> to get don't use a my hotel and me. Airbnb. And you know how damn expensive it is in Nashville, Tennessee. Now they came out here for a weekend. They all came on Saturday night. Saturday night is the biggest night of CMA Fest. You have some of the biggest artists, and if you, you have the maybe the would you say he was the biggest name? I'm not going to agree with the biggest name because you know I'm a fan of the other artist that was there. Yes. But I mean, and, listen. And no, no, no. <laughs> no. Let, me, let me go. And this guy comes on and um, everybody is just like what is standing happening? around. Like, what's happening? And Sam Cat's like, oh, well, you know, you should know his songs. And Okay, first of all, and, that is not, you're sh selling me short. I did not say that. But what you also said is that, or maybe I said it, or maybe I heard it, <laughs> okay. that this particular artist thinks that the number one songs and the hits are too corporate. Okay. And I'm like, listen, the reason why you're on that stage right now and the reason why there are thousands of people here that paid a ton of money to come see you is because of your hits. They want to see your hits. But did they That's pay, why you're getting paid millions of dollars. But did they pay all the money to see particularly that artist? A lot or of people did. to be a part of CMA Fest? No, that is untrue because if they wanted to spend all their money, they would have bought a ticket to his specific show. Yeah, but they maybe can't and they bought a ticket for that particular night to see him. All right. This so is a, no, no, no. Here's, okay, here's a stretch. This is a stretch and I know it's a stretch, but maybe if I say it like this, you'll get it. There is a community festival for fitness and yeah. everybody can take a class from gyms in this town. Right. And they bought a collective yeah. ticket to be able to take a class from every gym. Yeah, yeah. And then they get to booth camp I and they're like- I on the best show ever. So they yeah, left and they're like, hell yeah, let's go to boot show. camp. But now all of a sudden people are going to be like, well, I don't like the style of which you did this at this fitness that I bought a community ticket, not a ticket to your gym. I didn't put my money directly to you. I bought one to try out everybody. And then I got to your class and I was like, mm, I don't like the way you did it. Is that fair? No, but you- So if it's not fair, then it's the same thing for the artist. No, but if I were an artist and I was on that stage- I would have done everything in my power to freaking burn that damn place to the ground and rock out and have everybody leave and being like, that guy is awesome. And he played all the songs I knew. I could sing to them. I could dance to them. And he didn't. And my argument, my main argument is, so you're telling me if you told your 18, 19, 20-year-old self that was trying to make it in the business, right? You mm -hmm. had this big dream. And then... One day you're going to be headlining at Nissan Stadium on Saturday night in front of thousands of people. You're going to say you don't want to play your hits because it's too corporate. Listen, I'm not. I mean, I'm not saying I'm you're just saying, wrong. Like I understand where you're coming from. I would never. And again, yeah, but I, you but ain't I don't him. understand where they're. I mean, they could have a completely valid point, right? Where you're saying if they knew the songs, then they would be fans. Yeah. I'm the biggest fan, but you don't know any of the songs he's singing. You're obviously not the biggest fan. That is all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying that you're wrong per se. I'm just saying I don't necessarily agree wholeheartedly. How about that? Agree to disagree? Yeah, we can agree to disagree. But We've I'll been, tell you what, a I lot don't... of people in that stadium agreed with me because when they, booed. they were booing. The lights then, came on and they booed. And like, I wasn't that personally affected by it. You weren't. We understand. We also know that these guys, for lack of, they're working this is their yeah. job right so i get that um but also eh. it was a heated argument it was Needless a heated argument say, we, we were in the bathroom okay. i don't want to cut you off <laughs> not me and you <laughs> <laughs> okay me, edit that part out me, we were not in the bathroom <laughs> me and kayla we were in the bathroom on the way out and people were livid guys were like fuck this yeah fuck him oh yeah you're telling me you played one fucking song yeah. that i knew we waited here all night for you yep and he got booed but guess what? He don't care. I don't think he cares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he cares. Yeah. And it is it is what it is. I personally, I also have to say that I have a soft spot for people who don't give a fuck. Yeah. And I respect it. Even if I don't agree with someone, if they are genuinely themselves yeah, and, and they take no 
for lack of a better term, shit from anybody. I love that. Even if I don't agree with them, I'm like, you know what? We need more of that in this world. I agree with you that part. So, that part's kind of like, yeah, he kind of just did what he wanted those to do. People are and gonna that's bitch. Him. Yeah, those people are going to bitch. And when he opens a bar on Broadway, they'll be there. Yes. They're going to bitch about it. And then when he has another show in Nashville, they'll be there. So yeah. it's like, I, listen, I get it. I see what you're saying. I don't necessarily disagree. I'm just saying I don't wholeheartedly 100% agree with you because I see his side too. But I also think like, hey, I think he thinks he might be too cool and is trying to be too different. It's like, you're, yeah, you know, I do, like, hey, yeah. Jason Aldean was on that stage and he fucking rocked out. Moving on. Um, <laughs> we also went to Spotify house. I love going to the Spotify house. I love Spotify and I love Blake Shelton and Old Red. Old Red. There's no D there, buddy. Is it O-L-E. Old Red. Yeah, it was, uh, well, Old Dominion played there as well. So that was your first night out. I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe two nights in a row. I'm still not over it, but, um, they had an extensive line also an extensive line at five 30 in the morning, by the way. Uh, but so Spotify house is always, I feel like, so it's a, not a ticketed event. You have to wait in line to get in, or you have to have like a VIP section wristband to get in. Right. And it's always a hot commodity. I feel like the line is always out the door. I think, and this is just my opinion, I think it's because it's so intimate. Like if you've ever been to Old Red, the stage is like on top of you. Right. You can see their sweat. Like you are very, very close. So if your favorite artist is going to play that stage, you better be in line because I don't know that there's really anywhere else that you can get that close to your favorite artist. Yeah, that's why I enjoy it. I do usually go there every year for at least one night because it is an intimate feel. It's small. There's like a whole different section on the top floor, but you're like right on top of the stage. And it's just, I think the feel, the environment in there. Yeah, but you get special treatment because you in the bougie VIP section. Yeah, that yeah. might have something yeah. to do with yeah. why I like going yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, you get the nice side door line, not the front line. So yeah, yeah if I were you, I'd also be there every year as well. Yeah, but it also seems like um, the entire Bachelor Bachelorette Nation. You mean Nashville? Is is <laughs> is at that place? Well, they are. They a hundred percent. That second floor VIP is all influencers, and I feel like. What are we at? 50 to 60 to 70% of influencers in Nashville happen to be part of uh, your alma mater. My alma mater. Mater? Is that what it is? Before. Yeah. Am I guess I you call it an alma mater. Yeah. That's funny because I was saying there at night too. There's 20 to what, 25 people on a season for the Bachelor or Bachelorette. And you pick them from all over the country, all over the world. But if you want to see somebody on that show, you just go out to Broadway on Saturday night and like you will run into. A bunch of them, I at agree. least for big events like mm -hmm. this, right? Well, they get the hookup. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I would too. Exactly. And so we ran into a few, and I'm like, you know, people I don't know because I don't watch the show. I haven't watched since my season, and um, I'm always like, which were you with Chris Harrison or after, <laughs> yeah. post or pre Chris Harrison? <laughs> that's the marker. Yeah, that's the marker. So there were uh, definitely a handful of posts. Okay. That I didn't know. I but, mean. It's yeah. a blind leading the blind here, buddy. Everybody looks pretty. Everybody's in great shape. And I'm like, you're probably on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Yeah. You see anybody you know? I ran into my ex-fiance's fiance. How was that? What? <laughs> the old ex-fiance's fiance. I, I feel like I see him everywhere in Nashville, which has just become a normal thing. Is it, is it weird? No. No? No. I don't think. No, it's not weird. There's no animosity, no sure. hard feelings. I mean, it's been a million years. It's been so long. Yeah, but you it, see him or you see them? Uh, no, just him. I was going to say, that him. feels less weird to me, but it's seeing them, does that make you feel some type of way? No, it doesn't. I haven't seen them together. I've seen him. And I think it's just, it's almost like I feel weird because I feel like people think it's weird yes right so if i'm in a and public spot and they're waiting and people are like oh i saw sean's over here and what's gonna happen and jason's over here or like i was sitting right behind him on a plane and i'm like i feel like i should feel weird because people probably think this is weird i think it's just like well what if you ran into your ex's new thing i don't i don't know her but if I don't you ran I into her and you were sitting right next to her, or like in a small area, how would you feel? I mean, I feel like 
you're lying if you say that not a little bit feels weird of because course. I think of human nature, but I also think it's part of life. Yeah. Especially if there's been enough time to like heal and move on, which obviously you guys have had, that it's like, uh, I don't know that it would be something that ruined my day by any means, but I feel like people, especially in the environment of which people met you and right. the fact that they everything was so public, yeah, they're obviously looking for the next juicy, I mean, reality situation of what's going to like unfold from there. So I don't think it's the same for me as it would be for you. But I do think that like, let's just get over it. Let's just move on. Yeah. Like it, nobody has an ex. Exactly. Andrew, how would you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, we got Andrew turn on the my, mic. Turn my mic on here. Uh, I think I'm with Sammy. I would be initially once like off rip, I would be thrown off and probably uncomfortable. But right. after like, a couple of years. I mean, I would probably be fine after a couple of months. Right. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like, you just want them to be happy, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. And, and it wasn't like I, uh, I've i seen him in this past year. So yeah. I never saw him prior to this past year. But now once I've seen him once, it's like the floodgates are just like, not seeing him everywhere. I'm like, what's up, buddy? <laughs> um, so like when, when you I saw see him, him now, do you acknowledge, do you guys like say what's up to each other or no? No, but I, I, I left... Being like, I should have just been like, what's up, man? Like, yeah, kind of just want like keep to, it cool. Yeah, I want to keep it cool, but it's like, I don't know how he feels. And it's just like, and also, again, like in the area that I'm in and people are around, I'm like, I'm just going to avoid this because I feel like people are watching. I get that. And so when I saw him on the plane, which was hilarious because there was an article that came out, I don't know if Caitlin or somebody talked about it on their podcast. They're like, Sean was on the same flight as Jason. I was like, wow, you guys must be running real low on the news today over at Us <laughs> Weekly. Um, but I remember I walked on a plane and then I look over and I was like, oh shit, that's Caleb from Barcel Sports. Funny guy, long hair. He does those interviews. Hysterical. Hysterical. I love him. Love him. And I was like, damn, that kid's awesome. And then I didn't realize I was sitting right there and I'm like stuck like in the lane. And it's like Jason is right next to him. And so, I mean, he's- Do you play it cool? I don't know that you play it cool. I feel like you're lying. To no, me. I play describe play it cool. I don't know. I just feel like would you I, I feel like your personality would be like a little like fidgety because you saw me like, okay, be normal, but then you would be less normal because you're trying to tell it yourself <laughs> to be normal. Yeah, that's you know where I mean? you get worked up in your head because yes. I do not like care. And I'm not just saying that for you guys to be like, oh yeah, no, I don't I don't care. It's been so long, but I feel like it should be weird. Yes. And there's totally been so much stuff made of it that it's like. You don't want to fuel the fire, but you don't want to be a dick, but you don't really care, but yeah. you do care. And you don't like, want to make a scene. Yeah. You don't want to talk. It's like, so it's a very weird situation. You kind of nothing it. You're just like, yeah. I, I could take this or leave this. Exactly. Yeah. It's fine. I think that's normal. And then I'll, but I haven't seen them together. I think that's different. I think that would be. That well, would be I don't know. I feel like it's been long enough. I take it back. I think it's been long enough that it wouldn't be weird. If I saw my ex with his now new whatever they are, I would just be like, hey, how's yeah. it going? Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm Sammy. Like, yeah, exactly. If you saw them together. Yeah. Yeah. But I Or separate. Right. No, I feel, I don't know. I might just like. Yeah, I haven't seen. <laughs> I don't know. I, I saw Caitlin one time and this is. When was that? We broke up in. Um. 2018. Damn. Yeah. When did you start dating? 2015. Okay. Um, and I was at a, a comedy show and I was sitting there and I heard somebody say, Caitlin Bristow's here. I was like, oh shit. Was this fresh? Was this fresh <laughs> off the scene? This was fresh out of the breakup? No, this is this like a couple months ago. Oh, I'm shit. telling you, when I haven't seen her, I have not senior everybody's like do you run into her i'm like no i never run into her and we both live in the same town yeah um and i was like oh crap and that that was weird like that kind of threw me off i'm sitting in the show i'm like kind of like looking around like, i also feel like the anxiety of it not like it potentially maybe happening is way worse than when it does yeah because you, you, like, you, you don't think about it yeah. you run into them you're like How or are the fact you? that you heard her name and then you're like oh god where is she yeah instead of it just being like she's right here it's like hey yeah you know, you guys aren't strangers. You could like, once it's there and you can approach it head on, I feel like it's way less stressful. Right. But like the anxiety building up is like, oh God, don't be an idiot. Don't make a fool of yourself. Don't make it something that someone's going to write about in whatever People magazine. So I, I mean, I get that. But. Exactly. So I didn't end up 
talking to her that night. I just, I was leaving. I, I didn't see her anywhere. And then I was leaving out the back door and I looked to my left and I saw her in like the backstage room sure. with the comedian. And I was like, whoop, all right. Got a blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, um, that was a little weird, obviously. Yeah. But when I told her, like when we had broken up, the last time I saw her, I was like, I do not want to talk to you or see you ever again. I said that out of like the situation that happened and how I found out everything. And that's where it was kind of left off. So I did not really have any communication with her for years. Did you, well, obviously, have you spoken to her since you kind of gave her, not necessarily the ultimatum, but like, get out of my life. I don't want to talk to you. Have you spoken to her at all? Yeah. Do I want to get into this? No, don't. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. Hey. We're back. <laughs> no, I have not talked to her in person. I, I sent her a text uh, a few weeks ago, actually. Okay. And it was a nice, a nice text. Do you feel like you're actually cordial now? Like if you could be 100% cordial? There are, yes, uh, 100%. Okay. Could be cordial. I feel like there's been times I'm like, yeah, we should just, I should just reach out and talk to her and just like, you know, we spent so much time together. Okay. We lived together for three years. We went through this once in a lifetime experience that only a handful of people in the world get to experience, right? So this incredible bond. And then it's just like, poof, gone. Like it's, it's been so long that I can't even really remember what it was like to be with her. You know what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. It's been so many years. You don't think about it. A year goes by, two years, three years, and it's like, holy crap, like I was with this girl living life and going through the most intense emotional part of my life. You guys have like her. a trauma bond. That's what I said on a podcast. I got lit up for that. Oh, just kidding. Don't light me up. I take it <laughs> yeah. back. I take yeah. it back. I got lit up for that last year. Because I said- Why did I, people light you up for that? I feel like that's well, genuinely I said, what it is. I, I realized after the relationship, I said, I do not think it was true love because, and I stand by my comments and I am, um, I believe that because if it was true, genuine love, then we'd be married right now. We'd be together, right? We right. would have found a way to make it work. Did I want it to be true love? Yes, of course. Was everything on the show that I was saying, like I wanted that. Like that was the yes. first time I think in my life that I was like vulnerable. I opened up like just desperately wanting that connection, wanting that love. And then she was going to back to me and then we were together and then realizing, okay, maybe this isn't that deep, genuine love sure. that I thought or that I wanted. But that doesn't take away from the fact that you cared from her, for her. And like you said, you were vulnerable and those things were real. Yeah. Coming off that show, getting thrown into the spotlight, having everybody watch your move and people fall in love with your relationship and just being flown all over the world. And it was a very, um, yeah, emotional time. Highs, lows, all that. So to go through that with her was an intense thing. Um, but yeah. Don't say trauma bond. Sam okay. Cat. Yeah. Sorry. I take that back. <laughs> no. I th I just thought that that was. No, kind I agree of, with you. Like, yeah, I feel like that would be something. Like you said, the amount of people who have experienced exactly what you have experienced is yeah. like what four people, <laughs> grand total. Yeah. That like make it out of the show and then live together for years afterwards yeah. and all that stuff. There's not many people who do that, right. and I don't think that anybody else can truly relate to you, like she can. Right. And so that's for forever, which I feel like is also why after all the dust has settled and you said, I don't want to talk to you anymore or whatever it may be, you know, if you saw her now, it would be fine. And your relationship would be fine because I think that whether you want to admit it or not, there is still some level of respect that yeah, you guys have for course, one another. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. And it was just so emotional because when we had broken up and when it was about to be released to the world, yeah. my whole thing was, and I said this, and I was just like, I want to make sure we do this together as a team. Like, no matter, it's going like, to be really hard on both of us. We're going to have to deal with all different types of opinions and thoughts and uh, people judging us. It's like, me and you are the only people that are going through this. 
let's do it as a team. And it didn't work out that way. I so was that's gonna why say, I was, do I was you upset. feel like it, you were a team or no? No, absolutely not. No, we weren't a team. Um, and so <laughs> going back to when I talked to her, mm -hmm. um, and now this is just like kind of me contradicting myself of talking to her because okay. I had asked her kindly to stop talking about me on her podcast because I said it's not fun <laughs> getting the Us Weeklies, the TMZs and all this. Like every few months I felt like people reaching out. Do you have a comment to say, a uh, comment about what Caitlin said? Do you have a comment about this? Do you have a comment about that? And I would just like ignore it all. Do you feel like... And now I'm sitting here talking about <laughs> yeah, this but, on the podcast. Okay. But I don't yeah. want to talk negatively I was going to say, it. you haven't said anything negative. So yeah. I feel like that is also a big part of... I feel like the animosity that could have been created is if you right. felt like she was saying negative things about you and you couldn't defend yourself or you just didn't feel like it was necessary for you to defend yourself. Yeah, I don't I, know. Yeah, no, I just didn't think what she was saying was accurate. And sure. I think she was saying things that were incorrect. Yeah. And, and that's a bummer, by the way, when you're not in the public light. Yeah. Like I feel like when someone's saying something about me and I can't defend myself and say what I feel like is the truth just in an average right. relationship in, uh, um, in private. Yeah. But then you magnify that by like everyone's opinion, like you said, social yeah. media and the media in general kind of just like really fuels that fire. Fuels it, but you get over it quickly. And I, I dealt with it so much that it was just like, whatever, like it's not that big of a deal. Nobody really gives a crap. Like I know what happened. I know um, how everything went down and just she can say what she wants to say. Mm -hmm. If that's something that makes her feel better or something that she has to discuss and you know she's an open book and she told me that which i understand and it is sometimes it's good to talk about like it's good talking about it right now with you because i never talk about it and i don't want to sit here talking negatively about my ex who i spent time with and but it's also a big part of the reason why you guys right now who are listening to me you guys know me for that relationship that's how i've created this following so it, it's nice to open up and like we said, the first episode, you said, are you willing to talk about stuff? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Are you willing to open up? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. I've never done that in my life. So it's like, <laughs> man, I can sit here. How much time you got, Andrew? Because I can sit here for the next 10 hours talking about this situation. <laughs> I do um, think it's something, you know, like you said, this is just a life podcast. And yeah. it would be, I think, dumb for you to not address the elephant in the room. Like you yeah. said, the reason people are initially following this podcast and know you is because of that relationship. And you can acknowledge it and speak about it without it being thrown negatively into the media. Right. It exactly. is what it is. Yeah. We are all adults here. It has been years. We're all moving forward. Let's just do that. Yeah. And the media will always try and spin things. Like they'll get some crazy headlines from of this. Of course. But, and I'm like, well, what did I say? Sean that? Booth fought at the Spotify house at CMA Fest. <laughs> yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Exactly. He was in the bathroom with Sam Cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Exactly. Why? <laughs> the reason why I had said that, hey, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to see you because when we were going through this together, I knew about Jason and Caitlin before anybody knew about Jason and Caitlin. I've known about this before the world knew about it. And I knew about it because, unfortunately, when I was sending Caitlin a text message, she sent me one back that she was supposed to send to Jason. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Were you guys together? Or we this had, was after Matt? This, this was like right after we'd broken up. I was in West Elm <laughs> looking for furniture. It was Thursday at 11.36 a.m. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll never, I'll never forget it because I was in West Elm. And I was looking for furniture for my apartment because I literally had nothing in my apartment. I told her she'd keep the house. I'll move out, like, whatever. I, I didn't want to be there. So I'm just looking for furniture. Okay, so I also think that there's two parts to a breakup. Yeah. One of them is when you actually break up, and one of them is when you feel like you've been replaced. Well, that was tough. Exactly. And so not only did you break up, but then you felt replaced, like, boom, boom. Yeah. Right away. It was and, that's and a one-two punch. It's a one-two punch, and it's also a one-two-three punch that <laughs> I um it's a new fight. It's a one-two-three punch because I said I am so glad all that happened at once to yeah. get over it all. Cause you have to when you deal with breakups, you go through the breakup, right? Which is brutal. And Breathing. then the worst thing after that is then feeling like you've been replaced or seeing your ex with somebody new. Yeah. 
I was like, I got that done all at once. Yeah, it was, was pretty rough. Six years ago. Yeah. I'm sweating over it. Yeah. And obviously that's she, not a good feeling. It was rough. I mean, and, and the worst thing was he couldn't talk about it. And I didn't want to blow up her spot. No. Like my question is, did you get a nice couch at West Elm? Or no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I honestly people at West Elm must have been like, what is going on with that guy? This guy just had a mental breakdown. <laughs> it wasn't just of dropped, the couch section. Must have just dropped everything and ran out of there. Um Okay, well, rock So anyways, start. <laughs> that's why I'm like, no, I've, I've dealt with that. Um, you truly have like grieved all of the things that you could grieve after a relationship, obviously very quickly within like the same day. Yeah. And so now if you see him at Spotify House, I'm it's like, just kind of like, hey, man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like I can't imagine how she must have felt after she sent that like, whoops. You think your heart sunk. Oh, yeah. Hers was out her ass. She was like, now what do I do? Yeah. So that was, that was in a nutshell, long story long, how I grieved and moved on and sure. moved past it. I just feel like this is like a therapy chair, Sam Cat. I sit in this damn chair and I want to tell you about my problems. What can I say? Yeah. I just have a warm, fuzzy heart. Yeah. What do you think, Andrew? You're a therapist now. <laughs> I'm now the uh he's the like, I'm trying to do work if you yeah. guys could just Yeah. I think there's a big difference between talking about a situation over and over and over on a podcast and talking about it one time and like if next episode we go through the same sequence of events. Yeah. Then it's kind of like, why are you harping on it? But right. I think it's fair for you to express your feelings and emotions on a huge situation in your life. Yeah on your podcast. It's also was not filled with emotion. You just stated facts of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not okay. Not trying to trash anybody either. Anyways, moving on, got a little sidetracked there. Uh, ironically, I did want to talk about weddings. Okay. So <laughs> Lay it go. on me. Um, I am over weddings right now. Is this a hot take? Is this, this is a, Sean a hot, hot take. take? I am over weddings. I love love. I've been to some fantastic weddings. I feel like we need to switch up the format of weddings going forwards. Okay. What do you mean exactly? I just feel like it's all the same. It just... All right. I am proposing mm -hmm. a new idea for wedding format. Okay. And of course, this is individual. Anybody can do whatever they want. Whatever they feel is what's most important. You just contradicted your everything you <laughs> yeah, said in the last 30 seconds, exactly. but keep going. Everybody loves a shorter wedding, correct? The like ceremony. Like the ceremony part, yeah. Right. All right, hear me out. Okay. This is what I think the perfect wedding is. You have a little ceremony between you and the person you're getting married to. It should be a very intimate thing, mm -hmm. right? It shouldn't. You shouldn't worry about the cameras and the people, and you should just be able to talk to them about how you feel and just have somebody marry you. Right. That's the kick it off. Okay. While you're doing this, you got, I mean, cause think about it, some guys, you know, you don't want to read the vows out loud. Sure. Right. Cause you might be nervous. There's a crowd. I agree. Um, I think people act differently around crowds, but if it's just you and that person in love getting married, I feel like that moment is very special. Very intimate. Very intimate. The, everybody else can hang out. They're getting ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then, you're talking like no bridal party, no parents, no, just you. No, you have all that. This is just the format But when of the you're flow. actually getting married. Yeah. It's just you and your yeah. bride. Yeah. Or groom. Correct. Okay. And then from that step, you then go into the next step, which is with your bridal party. Okay. It's You got your best friends. You got your best man. You got your maid of honor. And it's just you guys who are a super close-knit, tight group. Sure. Okay. I feel like right there whether it's like in the bar or something, you guys can have drinks and then you're celebrating with your best friends and then you read the speeches, the best man speech, Ooh. the maid of honor, when it's just your tight knit group. You're yeah. able to say more, doesn't have to feel forced. Again, you don't have a big crowd. You can make the inside jokes that nobody knows oh about. Oh my God. There. For those of you who don't know me, <laughs> Jessica and I have been rumored. Oh my Jesus. Exactly. Someone give me a glass of champagne. <laughs> and that's what everybody feels like when oh they listen. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. And the inside jokes are everybody's like, ha 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 yeah. ha. And you're just sitting there and if it's bad, it's really awkward and you're feeling uncomfortable. You ever been to a wedding where the maid of honor slash whatever best man are drunk when they give their speech? Always. 
Yeah. It makes me want to die I'm inside. saying we get rid of that element, all right? So you make it more comfortable for the maid of honor, more comfortable for the best man. Put them in a room together with like 12 people. You guys are drinking, cheers in. While this is going on, everybody else are eating, Okay. right? The food thing's a big deal. If you sit there for hours waiting for your food, that's- That's how people get too drunk. Too drunk. They got an open bar and no food. Yeah. They're passing around one cracker with like a pizza. Yeah pepperoni on it exactly but don't yeah. make it too formal don't sit you, you know you, this takes away the stress from the bride and groom that have to figure out oh we can't sit next uh jimmy next to uh, oh yeah trisha because the trisha, seating chart it's like a whole nightmare right no seating chart Trisha should stop sleeping with everybody it'd be a lot <laughs> yeah, easier damn trisha you're damn screwing it, up our tables <laughs> yeah so then you have they're eating their food whether it's buffet style however you want to do it you sit where you want to sit having drinks and then you got the bridal party they're eating as well, drinking. And then after that's all done, you've had some drinks, you're feeling good. They should come out and everybody just comes right out to the dance floor and just starts the party. Love it. Like that is when we start the party. Nobody's sitting around. You don't have to like wait a couple hours because there's people who want to get out on that dance floor or there are people who don't know when to get out on that dance floor. It's like bridal party comes out, boom, Everybody's meets out. all their friends. It's a huge celebration. And then you just party the rest of the night or whatever you want to do. I do have to say that I thought your reconfiguration of a wedding was going to be way more obscure, but I feel like that's very attainable. You yeah. can do that. That's not that weird. Right. I feel like I've been to weddings. I'd probably do that. Yeah. Because I feel like most part weddings, what would you say? 10, 15% of people like- no. Care. Or, <laughs> care. <laughs> I, I love weddings. I love weddings as well when I give a shit about the bride and groom. The thing is, like, don't I? I don't want to be like, don't invite me to your wedding if I don't know your husband. But like, don't invite me to your wedding if I don't know your husband. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go celebrate you, yeah. but it's just like, like my very best friends that have gotten married, amazing time. Yeah, like, I know. That's what I'm saying is that if you are really good friends with the bride or groom, you guys are gonna have a blast. That's what 100%. I mean. Ten to fifteen percent. If you don't, I've been invited to a bunch of weddings recently where I feel like I don't know anybody, and I'm sitting at a table with Jim, who works in accounting, and I'm like. Hey, so what do you do for work? And then we talk and it's like, what do you do? And then you're like sitting there and it's like awkward. And you're like, you want to know, I raise you one even more awkward than that. I sat down at a table at one of my very best friends. I love him dearly. He was my senior prom date, but we've been childhood friends. We were yeah. friends. I don't even know that we've ever held hands before. And I sat down in a drunk bridesmaid. I don't even know who she was. She's like, oh, are you the one who uh, took his virginity? And Ooh. I was like, no, it's not me. <laughs> and I didn't know anybody else at the table. I was like, this is the worst experience of yeah. my life. So yeah, I can relate to the awkward. Like, I feel I like really there's a lot here. of people there that feel the same where yes. it's just like, you're like, all right, we got this wedding, but I don't know anybody. And then it's kind of like, let's take away that, that interaction. Yeah. yeah. Like your second great aunt's cousin has to yeah. be invited. Nah. Yeah. See, but some people feel pressure from their family and their mom's like, well, you have to invite aunt Susie. I don't feel that pressure. Do you want to know what my wedding is going to be? If God forbid someone ever freaking marries me, <laughs> is going to be basically your step one and step two. Yeah, that's. I what ain't I having a party. Too. Yeah, I've been partying my whole life. Exactly. You know and what I mean? Like I want just... it to be just the peeps that like. I just feel like I'm over making sure everybody feels welcome or included because at the end of the day, I'm not really there for the wedding. I'm there for the marriage. Exactly. Yeah. Call me old fashioned, baby. I don't give a shit if I have. Beautiful Instagram photos. You want to know what I have? Yeah. Fucking husband. Oh, Let's damn. Go. Put that on a Mic drop. Instagram reel. <laughs> yeah. So wherever you're at, let me know. I'm free. Uh, yeah. I'll be here hanging out with Sean. Nice. I agree. I also think it's because we're getting older and we've been to a ton of weddings. Where 36. Think, yeah. 36 weddings. Oh, I thought you were saying 36. I'm like, I'm 37. No, no, no. I said <laughs> I've been to 36 weddings. You and counted I've counted your weddings? Oh, I have a notes app. Do you know how many things I have on my phone? Wow, so many texts. Uh, notes on my phone of just like weird shit for me. Because someone one day is going to be like, how many weddings have you been in? And I'm going to be like, 16. You want to yeah. see my notes app? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't say it was normal, Alex. I said it was weird. <laughs> Andrew, called That's you That's a lot of weddings. Yeah, I think I'm just being selfish and being like, I really enjoyed my friends, all my friends' weddings. But ones that I think when you don't know that many people, it's not as enjoyable. Which I get, but you're there for to support the person you're with who might find it enjoyable. But- well, my thing is, are you there for the love and the marriage or are you there to get really nice photos and videos? Are you talking about the bride and groom or are you talking about me? 
Not you. I'm talking about the bride and groom. I hope Weddings. the bride and groom is there for the That's marriage. That's what you just said. Yeah, because you're there for the marriage. Yeah. And the older you get, you don't have to worry about all of the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm there for? We're there for Sam Cat tequila and a uh, good time. Tequila, but let me tell you, there is something, and I don't know if maybe it's just me or maybe there's some like subconscious thing going on here, but like there is nothing hotter to me than a post wedding look for a man when they roll up the sleeves and they take the tie off and they unbutton the shirt and they're like kind of sweaty, kind like holding yeah. an old fashioned dancing on the dance floor. That's what I'm at weddings for. Yeah, hey. Amen. don't let me don't get me started on the order of declothing yourself at the wedding there's a there's an actual order that you need to go in as a guy and time we'll get into that another time though i can't wait <laughs> i will be present for that episode what yeah is that a thing or are you just fucking with me no i'm being dead serious there's like a whole... it's the thing that guys know or you're just making this up and saying guys no should it's do like it. yeah i think it's an unwritten rule you know okay but in order to get to a wedding, you have to find a wife or a husband. And in order to find a wife or a husband, you have to go on a first date. And here we go. This is our first time doing this segment called The Absolute Worst. All right. This is The Absolute Worst. We're going to pick a topic. I'm going to tell you my absolute worst. She is. And we're going to have one caller tell us their absolute worst. And today is first date. So we're going to start with a caller. Okay, let's do All it. All right. Her name is Kaylee, and I'm going to call her up right here. Where's I got her up, number Kaylee? through Instagram. Hello. Kaylee, Sean Booth, you are in the booth right now, and you are actually our first caller ever. Dun, 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 dun. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> All right, we got to hear. We uh, got a brief description on Instagram of your worst first date. I'm going to give the floor to you right now. You tell us what went down. Are you ready? Drum roll. <laughs> We're ready. Okay, so last summer, uh, my friend Sarah and I, we did a little summer fun dating challenge, which is probably a whole podcast in itself, but... What came of it is this hilarious first date story. So matched with a guy on Hinge, and I, I believe it was a Sunday night because we he immediately asked me on a date the following weekend. And we spent the week kind of texting back and forth. And it's very important to note that all of the texts were funny banter, were making jokes at each other, you know, little pranks here and there. It's just all fun and games, nothing serious to it. We're not doing the get to know you thing in text. So he's like, I want to take you to dinner Friday night. So we, we've got this plan. He's going to pick me up. Um, and Friday morning, I, I have a few meetings over town. I'm not paying attention to my phone. And he texts me and says, hey, I have to be transparent with you about something before tonight. Well, I don't see that for like two hours. <laughs> and um, so when I do, I respond and I'm like, oh, of course, like what's going on? And he, this man tells me, he says, I lost my right hand in a farming accident a few years ago. And I just wanted you to know before the date. Well, what do I do? I assume he's messing with me and trying to pull one over on me before this date, since that's what we've done all week long. And I respond with pics or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what does he do? He responds with humor and he sends a selfie with his arm like laying across his chest and he, in fact, does not have a hand, and he goes, I'd flip you off, but I can't. <laughs> so I respect him for playing the game back. Great um, response. <laughs> yeah, but now I just feel, I mean, I am so embarrassed. I, like, want to bury myself under a rock. I'm like, I have to go on this date. I cannot, like, but I feel so uncomfortable. So I continue on with my day. I go to a workout class. I don't eat dinner because he tells me. He wanted to take me to dinner. Um, and so I am like almost shaking at this point because I'm so hungry. He picks me up and he goes, so what do you want to do? Like no plan, nothing thought out. Takes me to a bar um, and we get drinks. And he just sits down and starts talking about this amazing dinner that he cooked himself right before the date. So I'm like, okay, I'm not getting dinner. <laughs> um, and the whole experience was just 
very awkward. The humor that was in text did not translate in person. Be careful, ladies, with that. It did not translate. Um, and I, he was just making snarky comments about women and talking about dates that he had gone on earlier in the week, which is just disrespectful on a first date. And um, actually takes me home, leans over to give me a kiss, pulls away and goes, well, I'm not getting anything tonight. So that's all. Thanks. <laughs> and, me up and I never hear from him again until I'm on TikTok like three months later and I see this video popping up and it's this woman describing almost word for word the exact same experience. And it has several hundred thousand views and probably 50 or 60 people in the same city commenting that they had the exact same same thing happen to them or their friend. So <laughs> Jeez. This guy's out there, Sam He's Cat. out there. <laughs> we need to band together and take him down. Wait, wait, wait. So this guy got 50 to 60 dates in his town? <laughs> that in, in itself, I, who has the time? I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions. First of all, good on you for surviving that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Sorry about it as a fellow single woman. I can, I feel for you. I can relate. But uh, you know what? I think out of everything that you just told us, that is one shocking thing after another. The part that's most disappointing to me is the fact <laughs> that the sarcasm did not translate from the texting know, to reality. It's so disappointing. <laughs> that is, I think, the biggest bummer because I don't know if it's just because now we are dependent on like phones and social media and stuff, right. but people have perfected the witty banter through texting yes. and, you know, whatever flirtation that is. And then you meet them in person. You're like, holy shit, I'd rather be in bed. I'd rather be asleep I than hanging out with you rather do anything else but this yes <laughs> how old was this guy he had to have been probably 29 or 30 okay also how did he lose his hand what was that happening farming accident so, but did but did that turn accident. out to be true all right i didn't talk to her and he wouldn't tell me in text because obviously my first question is oh my gosh what happened and he said you know i'll tell you the whole story later built it up to be this whole thing and then when we get in person he's like oh you know, my hand was just sitting there. Somebody turned the equipment on. Next thing I know, boom, which I say is uneventful, but he did lose his hand. So I guess this is pretty eventful. It's pretty eventful for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I do got to give the guy credit, though, with his response. I he's saying, yes, I, I, I would flip you off if that's good. Well, I mean, I feel like if he's that's been good. missing a hand for an extended period of time, he's, he's got to work jokes. on his personality yeah. and his jokes about it. Oh, damn. <laughs> Well, that is the absolute worst, Kaylee. Thank you for calling in. And better luck Thanks next time on Hinge. Guys. All right. Yeah. Bye. My mind is blown on like so many different things that she just said, but how did that guy get 50 to 60 dates? Hey, he knows what he's doing, I guess. Sam Cat. He doesn't. You're up. He doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's a, I don't know. Jeez. I'm, my mind is scrambled eggs right now, but. My first worst date, I do have to say when we were talking about this, I was thinking I've been on a lot of first dates probably within the last year and a half or so. Uh, none of them have been super traumatizing. You know, like I pretty much know how to stand up for myself and I think that I weed them out. I'm also extremely picky. So to even get to a first date off of a dating app is, I feel like not very common for me. But however, I was feeling adventurous. I had just gotten out of a situationship and I was like, you know what? He's not going to break through your window, Sammy. You got to try. So I am on hinge as well. Uh, and this guy seems very nice. He seems a little vanilla for me, but like, whatever, you can't judge someone by their texting because you never know. He invites me to a coffee date. I'm like, perfect. Kind of low key, no pressure. It's not a full dinner where if this guy sucks and you're stuck there for the whole meal, he's like, do you want to meet up? I'm like, I love it. I'm, I'm leaving my friend's house from Mount Juliet. I'll be back in town in 40 minutes. He's like, I want to take you to this coffee shop. It's fine, whatever. We get in line. It's a Sunday afternoon. So it's kind of busy. Like people getting out of church. There's a lot of families. Everything's great. I get up to the line. I order like a gentleman. He lets me go first. I order my drink, whatever it may be. And then he's like, you go get a table for us. I'm just going to order and I'll pay. Great. Love it. Love chivalry. Love that you paid for my coffee. I go and I sit down. They call my name. They deliver the coffee. I'm sitting there, you know, and then it's, so what are you over living? You know, someone <laughs> tranquilized me, but it was fine and it was moving. All of a sudden, 
the waiter comes, calls his name and puts the drink down in front of him. And I'm just looking at it and I'm like, what the hell did this guy order? Meanwhile, this dude is mid thirties. Okay. And I don't know why that bothers me, but I just feel like full grown adults should not do this. He ordered a glass of milk. <laughs> he ordered what, a what's glass. What's wrong with that? Sean, what is wrong with that? Where to start? First of all, he invited wanted me. wanted some extra calcium. No, no, no. I go, I literally just like blacked out. I was like, is that a glass of milk? And you know me, I'm really good at hiding my facial expression and or my yeah, real emotions. Good. Yeah. And I was like, is that a glass of milk? And he was like, yeah, I don't like coffee. That's what he said to me. And what I wanted to say back to him was, why the fuck did you invite me to a coffee house? First of all, you know what else is an acceptable was form it of 2% milk? 2% or whole milk? Ice cream. We could have gotten ice cream. That would have been so much less serial killer. Immediately, I'm like, this guy has bodies in his basement. Who the fuck? <laughs> who? Who asks someone to go out on a date to a coffee shop and then orders a glass of milk? What if it was orange juice? I think I, I it still would have been weird, but it would have been way less weird than milk. And that what was a this, deal a breaker? I, I don't even know. You said, I cannot. I will not stand for this glass of milk. Here's the thing. I wasn't vibing with him to begin with. He felt really boring. And I was like, uh, I just feel like he was one of those people that also like, I'm very sarcastic. And I feel like yeah. he didn't like pick up on that. So sometimes I would say things jokingly and he would think like, oh, really? And I'm like, okay, no, that was a joke. <laughs> so it was like all of these little things. He just seems like a good old boy to me. Okay, that well just... then you can go on a date with him, Sean. It would have been awesome if he pulled out uh, Nestle Quick syrup and poured some. I was I like, have now it's chocolate milk. milk. I do have to say, people are like, oh my God, what happened after you asked him if that was a glass of milk? And I was like, I think I blacked out. I'm not even sure like how, all I know is that I called my cousin Kelsey and I was just like, I can't date anymore. I, I was like, I know that this is not the end of the world. Like I said, no traumatic first date experiences yeah. for me, but a man is going to order a glass of milk on a Sunday afternoon when also he's the one who initiated it. So that means that we could have gone anywhere, anywhere and done anything. You invited me to a coffee house. Turns out you don't like coffee. And instead of getting a tea, a soda, a water, an orange juice, you're going to order a glass of milk. First of all, what kind of self-respecting adult doesn't shit themselves right then and there eating, drinking dairy? I don't trust anybody. What? You mean to tell me that if you went out on a date with someone and they were like, oh, I just got a glass of milk, you'd be like, this is my wife. I'm like, hey, this girl wants some strong bones. I dig it. You are disgusting. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm all sweating right, fellas, nothing about it. Don't bring your milk around Sam Cat. No, but you know what? It also goes to show that his name started with a J and you can't trust a J name. Ooh. I got like... A few of those. Justin. The amount of men who have like tried to ruin my life, that's name starts with a J is kind of a lot. We'll get into names in another time. Okay. That was okay. not the absolute worst, but. It was the absolute worst. I still think about it and it makes me cringe. Ugh. Imagine right. the confidence that guy had. That's great. It's kind of like you're talking about that artist. Okay, well, he's does probably him. still single if you're interested. <laughs> I'm sure I could connect you. Yeah, appreciate it. Let me know. All right, my worst first date. This was years ago. I was in my young 20s, so we're talking way back. I was working for an insurance company. I had met a girl. I was living in Madison, Wisconsin. She was living in Chicago, Illinois. She invited me out to Chicago to come to Cubs game. Awesome. Let's do it. I drive a few hours out to Chicago. It's like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I don't know why I'm already laughing. Uh, pick her up and then, no, I park my car, go to her place, and then we hop on a couple trains to get to Wrigley Stadium. Sure. Wrigley Field. Never been there. I was like, hell yeah. as a day game. We go to this bar right behind the stadium, right behind home plate. If you've been to a Wrigley Field, you probably know which bar it is. I can't remember. It's got a rooftop, a couple of stories. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah. All right. So we had a couple of drinks. We go inside, great seats, a couple of drinks at the game. We're having a good time. Leave the game, go back to that bar to have a couple more drinks. And somebody gets a round uh, of shots. And at this point, she ran into some people that she knew. So she has shot tequila. I did quickly thereafter. I noticed that she was going down. Like she was feeling pretty good. Yikes. Like that last shot she probably shouldn't have had. And I'm talking like she was starting to get real sloppy. So I was like, all right, I'm going to run to the bathroom and get out of here. Um, so I go to the bathroom, I come back out and she's gone. And I'm like, where is this girl? And I look First floor, second floor, third floor. And then some girl came up to me. She's like, are you looking for that girl that you're with? I was like, yeah. They're like, oh, uh, a couple of us put her in a car to get her sent back home. Um, she couldn't stand up. She couldn't walk. 
she couldn't talk. <laughs> so we had somebody bring her home and I was like, okay, that's cool. But my wallet and my keys are in her purse. <laughs> and what do you do? <laughs> yeah. So I'm in the middle of Chicago. I don't have my wallet or my keys. You got your phone? I got my phone. Okay. Um, she's obviously not picking up any calls. Oh boy. And, and you don't live in Chicago. And I don't live in Chicago. So I have to find my way back, take a couple of trains, go to her place. I'm knocking on, her, on the apartment door for like hours. And this is your first date? First date. You ever met her before this? Um, I think she worked for the same company in, I, th- I can't remember how we met. Okay. So I can't get my, uh, my wallet. I can't get my keys to drive home my company car. I can't buy a hotel room because I don't have any money on me. And I'm knocking on this apartment for hours and she is obviously just like dead. dead. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Was there like a maintenance man or someone you could Nothing. Attach? No, it wasn't one of those. It okay. wasn't like a big grand oh, okay. apartment. Okay. It was like a smaller, like a little entryway and sure. then her door. Um, so I was like, all right, I got to go into uh, survival mode here. I walked across the street. To started a bar. begging. <laughs> I was sitting at a bar. I can't buy a drink because I have no money. So I got a a glass of water and this is going to sound terrible. In my mind, I was like, I need to find a girl. Someone to go home with so I don't have to sleep on the sidewalk. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's where my head went. I mean, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So then I just started, you know, talking. You didn't know anybody else in the entire city of Chicago. I didn't know anybody in Chicago. No. I was 23, 22 years old. I, I lived in Connecticut and New Hampshire my whole life. I didn't know a single person in Chicago. I couldn't call anybody. And so then I met this girl. She was a waitress. And so we started hitting it off. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? This is getting worse. So you went on two first dates yeah, in one so day. Yeah, so then I then we went out. She's like, yeah, just wait for me after the shift and we'll go out. So then we went out, like, spent the night in Chicago and she was just your sugar mama. She's it's, like, I met this bum at my yeah. shift who claimed he didn't have a wallet or anything. Yeah. Did you tell her the story? Oh, I told her the story. Okay. Yeah. And then she just brought me around Chicago and it was like a really fun night. Yeah. But it's also bold that she believed you because I feel like that could be some swindle, like Tinder it swindler could. shit. Yeah, now where like, I oh, I don't have me. a wallet. Yeah. Like seeing all these Netflix documentaries, I wouldn't have believed me. Hell no. You don't have a trustworthy face. Oh yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> so I ended up, you know, staying at her place. How'd and- it go? <laughs> Worth it? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Well, no, I, I got a, I had a place to sleep. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I'm sure it was nice and cozy, nice and warm. And then the next day, yeah, yeah, yeah. The next day, walking around and um, went back to this apartment. Still didn't have any calls from her. Couldn't get in touch with her. Didn't know any of her friends. We knocked on the door, left her a note on her door. And it wasn't until about 5 or 6 p.m. that next day, she went across the street to that bar I went to and she dropped off the keys and wallet. And she probably blocked your number. She's like, I'm never talking yeah, to this guy again. Never talked to her My again. My question is, you said this happened on like a Tuesday. Didn't you have to go to work on Wednesday? Yeah, exactly. Of course. So I you have... called your boss and you're like, hey, funny story. Yeah. Yeah. I went on a date and now I'm I trapped worked from in Chicago. Home, so oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I was able to pull that off. But. Yikes. It was terrible, but then it was also really good. And it was also what I feel like the plot for a rom-com. Like imagine me and that girl fell in love. I was going to say, if, you, if that was we your We were joking wife, about it. We're like. This is a wild story. If that were your wife right now, you would have a movie made about yeah. you. Who we would were play just gallivanting in Chicago, going on subways. I was a big city boy for 24 hours, falling in love until I wasn't. And then that was it. And falling I'm, in love. Falling in love. What? English. Falling in love. Homeless. Yeah. Falling in love again. Yeah. A falling in love sandwich, if That's you will. It. That's our sandwich. The absolute worst. You uh, win, by the way. If we're voting, Sean wins. It's by far the worst. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Were you just trying to justify that it wasn't? I mean, I guess if you no, would have met another brutal. girl, it would have been yeah. way worse. I drove home back to Wisconsin. You ever see that? And a girl complete, again? my brain was in a pretzel. I didn't know what to feel, what just happened, what was going on. You ever talked to, uh, talk to the drunk girl again? Never, ever. If she's listening. <laughs> hey, girl. This, so yeah. I hope you <laughs> see. And that's why I have a two drink maximum on a date. Yeah. That's I mean, smart. until I know you and then like all bets are off, but like a first date, two drinks. Yeah. Well, we'll let you guys decide <laughs> which is the absolute worst first date. That is it. Another episode in the booth. We will see you on Monday. Remember, like, comment, subscribe.
ratings, reviews, stars. Join our Facebook group. Team on three. One, two, three. Hey.